Morning folks, in the truck, Davey in the truck, coming to you today from Falkirk. I'm at the Castle View Industrial Estate, it's a, a wee bit blowy, it's overcast and it's 14 degrees. Good morning folks. Right, let's go into business, the coronavirus update and then we'll move on to the news stories that I've picked out to talk about. All right. So, tested in Scotland's NHS, 130,104, and that's plus uh, 1,609 tested positive. Um, this is early piece, of course, since the uh, epidemic started here in Scotland. That's 15,665, and that's another 12 positive cases in Scotland yesterday morning, Tommy. Um... Deaths. Uh, that is a uh, 2,434. Sore one, up 12. Now, I had a look. I got last week's iPad out and had a look to see how many deaths there was registered last Wednesday or reported on last Wednesday. And that was 12 as well. Now, everything seems to be in a downward trajectory. Um, deaths are up and down a wee bit. But I suppose that's got to do with the ages and and cases that are presenting at that point in time. Right, the National Records of Scotland released their figures yesterday and total deaths in the community and in hospitals, um, that includes care homes, now stands at 4,019. Ah, good morning, Ted. Um, anyway, so the deaths in total have broke the 4,000 barrier. Um, as I say, but the trends are still downwards, okay? Now, yesterday at First Minister's Questions, the First Minister gave a statement on the track and trace system. Uh, sorry, trace and protect. Right? So, yesterday, she reported that 600 odd people had been tracked and traced and uh, 700 uh, 700 odd, I haven't wrote the figures down, um, 700 odd people have been contacted to self-isolate th through the trace system. Um, what's interesting about that is that, uh, at least in Scotland, the trace and protect system is actually working. It's up and running. It's functioning. Hi, Jane. Uh, so that's a good thing, right? Of course, right on the back of that statement, we went straight into First Minister's questions. In car crash, Jackson Carlo went on tests again. He keeps banging on about these care home tests. Now, Mr. S Mr. A a car crash, Mr. Carlo, he knows that it would take time to get the infrastructure into place to be able to test everybody in their care homes at least once a week, every worker and every patient. That needs planning. You don't just say one day, right, that's what we're going to do and wave a magic wand and it's done. It takes a infrastructure. Good morning, Robin. Um, it takes the, the infrastructure has to be put in place. The care home managers have to set up a system. Somebody in the care homes, on each shift in the care homes, has to be trained in how to do the tests, uh, how, to, how to put them into their uh, lab packaging and then get them off to the labs. It couldn't, it can't just happen. It's going to take a wee bit of time. But the figures yesterday showed that uh, at least 11,000 people have had that initial test. So that should increase as the infrastructure gets into place, as care home managers get a system into place for testing their staff, and the staff get a system into place for testing the patients. So there's a start there. But Mr. Carlos screaming about test, 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 test. Uh, he knows fine well he's politic and he knows fine well that the infrastructure doesn't just appear overnight. It has to be put into place, right? So once again, car crash was pol politic and like hell. When there's an agreement not to politicise this stuff and to wait until the public inquiry happens. But never mind, eh? Richard Leonard. Richard who, I hear you ask? He was all over the place. He was a test... PPE, test, PPE, and as usual, 
he got his bottom spanked, he spanked by the First Minister, irrelevant little sod that he is. Wally Rennie, Wally Rennie went on the economy. But as we all know, Wally's a wee bit politically tapped. For a guy that's been in Parliament for so long, he doesn't even know where he is or what his job is. You know, so the First Minister went a wee bit easy on him. But he, and Patrick Harvey went with tests again. So, basically, First Minister's questions was wasted um, looking for answers that they already have. Just pure politicking. You know, it was it was a disgusting display. Meanwhile, down the road, the Stushy at Westminster goes on. Sir Keir Starmer, the leader of the Red Tories, he went after Bojo on the school's fiasco. Right? Get all the kids back in school for the 1st of June. Get all the kids back in school for 1st of June. And what was Bojo's reply? Bojo's reply was basically, I thought we agreed not to politicise this stuff. You know, that was basically his reply. He couldn't make it up. It was like a reverse mirror. On what's going on up here in Scotland. <coughs> uh, up here in Scotland, car crashing the Tories are politicising everything. And down there, the Tories are complaining Labour are politicising everything. You just couldn't make it up. You really couldn't. <laughs> oh, but hey, you know. So, King Bojo hit back with Stoke. We agreed no to politicise these things. Oh, you couldn't believe it, eh? Sir Keir Starmer, the knight of the realms, and Bojo, the man who would be king. What a comedy to act they two are. But what's interesting about that is that nobody bothered to... <laughs> and nobody bothered even to see what Mr. Uh, Mr. Ian Blackford had to say. That seems to have been ignored done the press altogether, you know? And also, in England, a... Uh, Neil, sorry, Professor Neil Ferguson, the guy that did the modelling that convinced Bojo to get into a lockdown two, three week, uh, two weeks late, says if Bojo had paid attention to what was being said um, a week earlier, then 25,000 lives could have been saved. Um, now, Professor Ferguson had to quit because um, some, uh, what, uh, his girlfriend came out of his house and he was seen, she was seen getting into his house so he broke the lockdown rules and he had to quit but he's now in the press telling the press that if Bojo had listened to the signs 25,000 people would still be alive today um, that's a so this claim for Westminster we are listening to the signs we are listening to the signs we are listening to the signs <coughs> it appears not to have been the case and in the case of the Scottish Government, at that point, they hadn't set up their own scientific advisory um, team. So they were following Sage's advice, or what they thought was Sage's advice, because they, they're not getting to sit in the Sage meeting, that's getting sent to them second on. You know? Aye, I know about a Cole Hamilton's false care home story. Right? So it would appear that they, they haven't been following the science at all. And the scientists have over the last couple of days, over the last week, nine days, have been hitting back. Like yesterday, they tried to force the scientists to say it would be all right to reduce the social distancing distance from two metres to one metres. The scientists dug their, heel, their heels in and said, no, it's two metres, it stays two metres. You know, so it's good to see the scientists starting to actually step up to the plate and come out with the truth. And that way we know exactly who he hold accountable. You know? Um. Also, in England, a prosecutor's... Um, England, meanwhile, England's a chief, prosecutor, a chief prosecutor has been threatened with legal action by the English legal system itself for no, hi <laughs> cousin, for no actually launching an inquiry into the Cummins situation. So, <laughs> so there's a, an absolute fresh free for all on the Cummins story. It's just no going away. Bojo's just no hearty. He wanted this shut down and it's no happening. Also in England, moving on to good news, 
the English sex workers can get back to work apparently. Because apparently as of yesterday, people can, in England can now start having sex with others from out with their household. So the prostitutes down south have been celebrating because their industry gets up and running again. <laughs> There's always a comedy when it comes to the Tories, eh? They must have been missing their mistresses or something. <laughs> right, uh, it's also reported that COVID-19 is to hit the UK economy hardest of any of the developed nations. Right. So, if we throw Brexit into the mix, a new third world country is born. And that's the UK. <laughs> Thanks, Susie. I'm glad you enjoyed the show last night. Right. But, I mean, Trump's staying the same way the USA. I mean, the UK and the USA are becoming singles only, Dean. I heard that. We know fine well why the Tories uh, allow to say that it'd be alright if sex with somebody else for your uh, for you out with your ho at your household. They're all missing their they're all missing their mistresses. <laughs> anyway, as I say, Trump's doing the very same thing with the USA. He's reducing it to a third world country and all. Right. Um Right, uh, Mayor Info's come out for the panel base um, poll for Scots Go Pop, right? And what that, uh, what this, what, what's been released this time and reported in the Herald is that 53% of Scots want Scotland to rejoin the EU after independence. I really don't think this is a discussion for right now, but I thought I'd report it because the poll had covered it, you know. And the big story, of course, eh, for myself anyway, is that eh, the UK borders, um, border force are no ready for Brexit, right? Just no ready. The UK government are well short of recruiting the 50,000 customs officers they require. And they never mind train them. They have never, they just, you know, they haven't get the, the Brexit at the end of the year. They haven't recruited the 50,000. They don't have time to train them. Right. So, Dr. Uh, Anna, she has, well, I'll try this. I don't really know how to pronounce this. It's Polish. Jer Zewka. Anna Jerzewka, the UK Trade Policy Observatory, told. The Commons EU committee were not ready and we're not likely to be ready. More importantly, we don't know what we're, what we're getting ready for. They have, how does the border force upscale and get things in place when they don't know whether it's going to be a hard Brexit, a soft Brexit? They don't know, they're not being told. They don't know what's going to be a trade deal, no. Looking at it, we all know it's going to be a hard Brexit, but... The border force, haven't they been told what it is they're required to control? They have no idea. You know, Gene Freeman and Professor uh, Jason Leach will later today be appearing before the, the Scottish Affairs Committee in the House of Commons. Now, if I was Gene Freeman, I'd have told them to go and build their heads. I know it's the Scottish Affairs Committee. I know they're Scottish MPs. But our MSPs are not answerable to MPs. They're answerable to us, the public. And health's a devolved matter. It's got nothing to do with MPs. So, you know... When the head of that committee, who happens to be an MSP, uh, an SMP MP, came to, uh, came to uh, Gene Freeman and said, we want you to appear in front of this committee, and by the way, bring Jason Leach with you, she said, I tell me go get lost. It's the other way round. Our parliament's in Edinburgh. If anything, the MPs should be appearing in front of that parliament to explain what sort of bloody mess they're making down there. Because let's face it, 
We've got 59 MPs working in that parliament down there. They're obviously no functioning in it for getting any, any um, anything that's functional for Scotland. Nothing. Yet they demand that our hard working, knackered out health secretary and chief clinician go down and answer to them. I tell you what. I would have got Pete Wishart and put my boot right up his by hooky if I was Gene Freeman. There is absolutely no chance that I would have been leaving the situation up here to get in there to answer to them Muppets. In fact, I would have dragged Pete Wishart up this bloody road and demanded to know what they 49 MPs doing there were doing to try and sort the idiots out doing there. Simple as that. Huh? You imagine that, Pete Wishart. Does he think that the MPs are above our MSPs? Our MSPs answer to us, the people. They don't answer to the uh, Wazak MPs. And the MPs answer to us, the people. They have no right to scrutinise or grill our MPs, our MSPs. How bloody well dare he? Rude email after him last night, I can assure you that. Right, and a wee bit about this morning. Class traitor, an all round useless no gooder, we Jack McConnell, or Lord McConnell, if you want to use that sort of thing, was on BBC Radio Scotland this morning, demanding that kids are put into schools in the middle of a pandemic when we don't have any safe working practices in place. And his argument is that they've had for March to get it done. March, April and the beginning of May were the, were, were the peaks of this pandemic. Our government was solely concentrating and keeping the death figures down. Look at the disaster that happened down that road. We've just spoke about it. We bojo and get the kids back to school by the 1st of June. Having to backtrack, look like that, looking like the buffoon that he is. And in the north of England, two schools having to shop for a deep queen because six children pick up a coronavirus and had coronavirus and took it out of the bloody schools. That's what happens when you don't have any planning or forethought. So we Jack McConnell wants us to start cramming kids into schools. Simple as that. Get your education system up and running. Get the deprived kids, especially deprived kids, that was his big concern. Get the deprived kids in the deprived areas straight back into the classroom. So we Jack McConnell wants to wipe out the poorest kids in the bloody society and probably their parents and their bloody grandparents all at the same time. And when he was asked what should be done, the wee half-wit didn't have a clue what he was talking about. Now, the reason he became a politician was because he was a crap teacher. So we've got a crap teacher that became a politician trying to tell the actual education secretary up here, eh, how to go about planning for eh, getting kids back into school and getting some sort of blended learning system going so that the education system can operate safely up until a point in time where there's either a vaccine or this particular virus has petered out and is no longer prevalent in our society. You couldn't make this stuff up. On the bright side, um... There was a poll released yesterday that showed how people get their information in Scotland. Now, the figures are always a year behind, right? So for 2019, the majority of people in Scotland, unfortunately, still get their news from BBC Scotland Television, or BBC Television. <coughs> Followed by STV, then the internet, then Sky. Um, when it came to radio stations, the good news is, Good Morning Scotland has only got 8% of the population as an audience. And eh, I'm one of them because I like to laugh like hell at the crap that comes out of the place. The propaganda that comes out of the place. Now, I can't believe that we Jack, who, we Jack, nobody, was getting plenty of airtime on, on BBC Scotland this morning to scalp the Scottish government when the wee sod is clueless and hasn't he got a scooby what he's talking about. I mean, after all, he left education because he was a crap teacher to become a politician. Right? <laughs> Do 
Uh, shush, don't tell your kids you're keeping the homeschooling going over the summer. <laughs> hope they're not watching this, eh? I hope they're not watching this, Lorraine. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's the stories I picked to talk about today. I hope I, I hope you found them enlightening and, uh, and entertaining. So, I've got five minutes left in my break. Let's have a look and see what we've got going here. You don't see the schools go back this year, Veronica. I think they will go back in a blended learning sort of thing. Looking for his gong, he's already got one. Yeah, let's have a look. Aye, they've got plenty of scrutinising in Edinburgh and, and Westminster. You're absolutely correct, Thomas. They have. The MPs have got no rights to call our MSPs down to Westminster as if they were some sort of subset or some sort of lower level of government. That sort of mentality needs to be put an end to. We see that with the Conservative Party. We see that with the Labour Party, where the Labour Party in Scotland answers to Ian Murray. Right? The Tory Party in Scotland and the Scottish Parliament they're ignored by their MPs, but answer to Alistair Jack. Right? I don't expect the SMP MPs to behave in that superior, upper-handed manner. As I say, I fired Pete P- Wisher off a dirty email last night to tell him he got grabbed himself. Do you reckon Wisher will be Lord Wisher soon, do you? I don't think so. he would need to leave the party. Um, in my opinion, uh, in your opinion, Davy, is there a second wave coming? I reckon the second wave's already started in the north uh, northwest of England. Right, to be honest with you, Paul. Will it come here? I don't know. That has to do with the behaviour of the people. Because it's no governments that will decide whether there's going to be a second wave or no. It's not even the virus that decides whether there's going to be a second wave or no. It's the p- behaviour of the people. If we um, stick to the rules, observe social distancing, keep cleaning our hands, like I do all the bloody time, before I pick up any bit of paper. Um, in fact, my hands are sore. I'm having to use my wife's uh, hand cream at night, you know, Nivea, because it's still my hands for drying out and cracking. Absolutely horrible. But if we stick by these rules, put the masks on when we're in crowded places, then, no, there'll be no second wave here in Scotland. Unless it comes out of the border. Right, let's have a look. Aye. Yes, Gabrielle. Gene Freeman and Jason Leach have been called before the Scottish Affairs Committee in Westminster. I'd have told them to get to. Right? That's what I'd have done with them. But when I see Pete, I'll tell him that. And I will see Pete. I'll tell him to behave himself. I would hope the First Minister's going to tell him to bloody well behave himself. Health Minister's got better things to do than, than that. Oh, hi, good morning, sweetheart. Yeah, wife's watching again. I better watch what I'm saying, folks. <laughs> so, I and when I see Pete, I'll be telling him to behave himself. The, the Scottish Affairs Committee doesn't get to call our M- MSPs down there. We get to call the MPs up to answer to us and the Scottish Parliament, they don't get a date the other way round. They're no above or more superior than a, our, our Parliament. Uh, see, in fact, we don't even need that second letter of government that they are. And our, the whole point of the independence campaign is to get rid of that second letter of government and have a government centred in Edinburgh, a proper Scottish government. Not a devolved one, but a Scottish government. Ah, uh, we plug for Nivea, John. <laughs> yeah, it took me all my time to remember what it was. <laughs> what I know is it's a blue tub. I pick it up at the end of the day. <laughs> Keep my hands nice and soft. <laughs> uh, it will come over the border the second wave. You reckon, Gabrielle? It depends. I mean, they come out. You can come out of that border with the virus, but as long as everybody social distances for you, you know, there's no much chance you're going to catch it. Hi, Duncan, for Perth. Um, 
who's watching. Hi Moira. Susan Suzanne Campbell Crichton is watching. Hi Suzanne. You're not tuning in just as I'm tuning out. But hey, uh, I'll be leaving the video up. Morning, Davy's wife. <laughs> yeah. My my long suffering dragon. <laughs> uh, but hey, uh, as I say, this this carry on with Pete Wisher and uh, the Scottish Affairs Committee, Dr. Uh, Colin Dunn, um, uh, Professor Leach, and Gene Freeman. That really got me wound up. That really did get me wound up. When I was scouting through last night looking for things, and I was on the the Scottish government website and seen that they had been that they'd been called. To testify to the Scottish uh, Affairs Committee, I nearly blew. There was nearly steam coming out of my ears. You know, I come over and I go on a rant. I don't, Bobby, I have no idea why Nicola is allowing this. But never mind Nicola. Jean should have told me going to a jump to himself or herself. <laughs> Aye, Al. Don't worry, Al. You can watch me. In you can watch me on the on the on the playback, Al. I'll see you soon enough when this is out. You got a pint, mate. Hmm. Oh, Jane, you think a hey, car log it tell to, to, to lay off uh, Twitter, do you? Aye, but well, he keeps getting a, keeps getting a doing. No. Oh. To the Bonnie Banks, I uh, lock home and good morning, Duncan. Hey. You can commend Body Shop. Hey, listen, uh, uh, Body Shop, him, hand cream. <laughs> Tina, I'm not going running about looking for a, a hand cream and things like that. And as for Body Shop, I thought that's where you took your bloody car, no your horns. Ah. <laughs> uh. I Val, the, the only uh, UK news you get in Belgium is BBC London. It's like Jack and Ori compared to Euro News, CNN, and various European news channels. Totally embarrassing. Uh, you're absolutely right. <laughs> we can actually through a, um, you know, if you've got a, a Sky device or a, a, I don't know, I don't watch TV, what do they call them? Um, Freeview box, you can actually a, flick through the BBC news channels um, around the UK, you can, BBC Scotland, BBC uh, London, yeah, BBC Wales, BBC Northern Ireland, you can actually do that through certain TV devices, I'm led to believe. Um. Right folks, that's my break over. I hope you've enjoyed the broadcast. Tomorrow's the review of the week. Should be able to get one or two funnies with it because let's face it, King Bojo and Sir Karma uh, <laughs> and Sir Starmer, uh, you know, Sir Keir Starmer. Uh, uh, it's just a comedy show. So there might, there's got to be the odd funny thing. Oh, um, what, what did Matt Hancock say yesterday that was stupid and all? Um, oh, hi, he said the arm number was irrelevant because the arm number's gone up in England and he's still opening everything up. That's what stupid Hancock said yesterday. That's what I mean about comedy. You know what I mean? So review the week tomorrow. I'll be taking a longer break tomorrow, so I'll be running up to my four and a half hours, so I've got 45 minutes to fit the review of the week in. So I'll look forward to seeing you all for the review of the week tomorrow. Um, so it's Indy Truck Davey in the truck, coming to you from Falkirk, um, where it's 14 degrees and a wee bit bloy. Stay home, stay safe, I'll see you all tomorrow.